Hello guys, welcome back to a new series on the channel and this is going to be Crypto Mining 101. So what this series is going to be about is just explaining the basics around cryptocurrency mining. There's probably going to be a lot of videos going on into the future. So I'm trying to make these for past reference as in if you come along it in a year it will still be relevant along those lines. And if you guys have any questions or have any ideas for what I should cover next in terms of topics then leave them in the comments below and I'll try get around to them. If you have any questions, join the Discord link in the description below for that, and I'll try answer those further questions. So understanding hardware is our first lesson, I'd say, in Crypto Mining 101. And here we have a scale. So it's CPUs, GPUs, FPGAs, and ASICs. These are the four basic main hardware to actually start cryptocurrency mining. So let's start off with CPUs. So CPUs are basically in everything, anything that is a computer, stands for computer processing unit, and it basically does processes for your computer. So you can also use it to mine. Now, as it says on the scale here, these are very flexible in terms of how many coins you can mine on them. So in terms of coins that you could mine, we have coins like Monero, Dero, and Zephyr. Those are the ones that come to mind in these times, but in the future, there may be way more profitable coins to mine on a CPU, but those are just the big ones that come to mind right now. In terms of CPUs, they're not very powerful for mining, so this is why it tends to be a lower form and people tend to start with GPUs because they're slightly more powerful, but let's stick to CPUs. So there's two main manufacturers of CPUs that are going to be used for mining mainly, and these are Intel and AMD. So with Intel, they're not necessarily used for mining that much. AMD are mainly the front runners in terms of cryptocurrency mining, just because they make way more powerful CPUs that can be used for mining. Intel are not specifically catered towards mining at all. AMD, however, in terms of CPUs, definitely are. So you can be more profitable on an AMD CPU than you can on an Intel CPU in general. Mostly, coins will start out with CPU mining, and then they'll progress through this progression that we see, but we'll get into that later on in the video. So that's the main thing you need to know about CPUs. The prices for CPUs can go from, you know, $100 up to $1,200, depending on what kind of level you're looking for. Intel do their i-series, so i9s, i7s, i5s, and stuff like that. AMD are normally going with Threadrippers in terms of mining or the Epic series. So... That's just for now times though, there might be in the future if you're watching this back, there might be different hardware out there in terms of CPU mining. So next let's move on to GPUs. So these would normally be on a computer as well, graphics processing unit, and they basically process the graphics. However, they can be also used for cryptocurrency mining obviously, because they're a form of hardware which basically perform tasks on a computer. So in terms of the graphics power, they are more powerful than a CPU in general in terms of the hash rate or the computing power, let's just say. With GPUs, there's three main overall. You'd have Intel, Nvidia, and AMD, as we see here. So Intel, Nvidia, AMD. These are the three main manufacturers of GPUs. Intel just came out with their new GPUs in terms of the graphics cards that you can put on risers and stuff like that. These aren't particularly good at mining right now. In the future, they possibly might be but I'm willing to say that NVIDIA in the future will definitely still be the best for crypto mining. AMD are catching up. They are very efficient in terms of mining. However, NVIDIA is more powerful. So there's less power draw from AMD cards. However, they don't produce as much hash rate. So you're not going to get as much coins when you're mining. You'd get more with an NVIDIA card. Intel are kind of out there. They're way below AMD and NVIDIA. I wouldn't necessarily get into Intel right now as of recording, but maybe in the future they come out with higher hash rate graphics cards. Obviously, they're catering towards gaming and actually processing graphics on a computer instead of mining. So you don't really know how powerful a card's going to be because NVIDIA, AMD, and Intel are not specifically developing for crypto mining. They're more developing for processing graphics on a computer. So in terms of CPUs and GPUs, I just want to make this clear right now. These are the most flexible in terms of coins you can mine. So for GPUs, and this will be for the future, you have coins like Flux, Ravencoin, Ergo, and a bunch more that you can basically mine 
I think the most amount of coins that you can mine is definitely on GPUs. They're the most flexible because people don't tend to actually develop four CPUs and stick to a CPU only network. They normally have a progression up to GPUs and then they would stop the progression there. We'll go into the progression a little bit later on in the video. However, GPUs and CPUs are very flexible in terms of the amount of coins you can mine. There's probably hundreds out there for CPUs, hundreds out there for GPUs. In terms of GPU prices, they can range as well. Obviously, the higher you pay for a GPU, the more powerful it will be. That would probably be in terms of graphics processing. Some of the GPUs out there are more powerful in terms of crypto mining than they are better at graphics. So for example, the 20 series GPUs from NVIDIA work way better than the 30 series GPUs on Fluxcoin mining. That's just how the architecture was set up within the GPU to process graphics. It basically has nothing to do with the Flux algorithm. So it's all about how NVIDIA basically set up the GPU at the start. It just so turns out that the 20 series are better than the 30 series on that specific coin. So as I said, the prices, they can range, you know, from $100 up to 2,200, I think is what the 40 series are going for now, the 4090. So that could obviously change as time goes on. But as of recording, that's the price range that we're looking at for GPUs. And over time, they have actually got more expensive. Everything gets more expensive over time, it should do. However, GPUs have been skyrocketing because of crypto mining. So now let's move on to FPGAs. So FPGA stands for Field Programmable Gate Array. And this is a very niche part of cryptocurrency mining. So very, very small. There's not many actual producers of FPGAs. Normally the ones that you would get for cryptocurrency mining would be AMD. These are the front runners in terms of FPGAs that people would use for crypto mining. There are other small companies, but they don't really mass produce like AMD does. And this is so niche that not a lot of people would actually want to go into FPGA mining. So in terms of hardware, FPGA is one to kind of stay away from until you know a lot about cryptocurrency mining, how to use softwares, how to actually load up bit streams and stuff like that. And not a lot of that will make sense to you right now, but hopefully in other videos we can explain that further. So for now, FPGAs, there's not many coins that you can mine on it. The ones as of now that we could mine are Radiant, Ironfish, and Kyla coin. Casper coin was on FPGAs and a lot of other coins before it were on FPGAs. However, it doesn't necessarily last that long for FPGA mining. They are way more efficient than GPUs. However, they do have a barrier of entry of expertise when it comes to mining. So FPGAs is a very niche thing. I wouldn't necessarily get into that right now. And then we move on to our last one, which is ASICs. So application specific integrated circuit. And this is basically the most efficient miner. It can only mine on one coin generally. It does mine on that coin's algorithm. So any coin that is on that algorithm, it will be able to mine, but you're only limited to that coin. I'd say FPGAs in general would slightly have less coins depending on which algorithm the ASIC is for. For example, Bitcoin is on SHA-256 and that is the algorithm that Bitcoin runs on. So there's a bunch of other coins that do run on that algorithm and you can mine them with a Bitcoin ASIC. However, with ASICs, the prices can be very, very high. So you can range from 50,000 all the way down to, I'd say around $1,000, but the hash rate and the efficiency and the computing power obviously goes up as the price goes up. Now, the prices of these ASICs are probably going to go higher as we get on into the future. So if you're watching this back, they can go for a range of prices all the way up to 50,000, depending on what coin you want to mine. A lot of coins are ASIC mineable. For example, right now, Bitcoin, Casper, Dogecoin, Litecoin, a lot of those big coins up there are mainly ASIC mineable. So this is if you want to go into those big coins that you see at the top of the charts, it would probably be through ASIC mining and not any of these types of mining. In terms of progression of a cryptocurrency network and in terms of understanding hardware, cryptocurrencies generally will start out on CPUs. So they'll start out mining on a CPU and then when the hash rate gets a lot higher, people will develop GPU miners for that coin. And then after that, the hash rate will get higher and people will basically 
make FPGAs for the coin, and then it will progress into ASICs. So the reason that this progression happens is because each one is more efficient than the last. So the CPU to GPUs, GPUs are more efficient, FPGAs are more efficient than GPUs, and then ASICs are more efficient than FPGAs. So the reason that this does progress is because if you're more efficient, you're more profitable. So you'd want to have hardware which is more profitable. Obviously, that comes over to ASICs. So Bitcoin was mined on CPUs, then GPUs, then FPGAs, and then it moved over to ASICs. Now, some coins out there, such as Flux and Ravencoin and Ergo, do not allow any progression past GPUs. It's just how they coded the algorithm. They only allow GPUs and slightly CPUs at the start, but mainly it would be in the GPU range for those coins. Now, we'll get into how that works in other videos. However, you just need to know that some algorithms do not allow the progression. This is good for GPU miners because they can make steady profits on a coin and not have to worry about FPGAs or ASICs taking over a lot of the hash rate on the network and basically plunging the GPUs into unprofitable ranges. So that's normally how a coin would progress. CPUs would tend to be a test net or just at the start of a coin. Mainly most of the mining should be done on a GPU and then it should progress to FPGAs and then ASICs. So that's mainly what I'd say is covering understanding hardware in terms of the four main ways to mine cryptocurrency. Now there are other options out there. For example, you can actually mine with an SSD or a hard drive. Now coins like Chia allow you to do this, so it's called storage mining. And this is very niche as well, so I think there's only two or three coins that can be mined using a hard drive or solid state drive. So it's very niche. But if you do want to learn about it, you can ask me comments, you know, in the Discord or on the YouTube comments, and I'll try answer something about it. If you want to see a full episode, then I will do that for you if we get enough traction around that. Now, there also are other things like, like kind of mapping mining. So you actually cover an area in terms of driving around, or you could even walk around, and you basically map out the area and in exchange, you'll get cryptocurrency. An example of this is called Hive Mapper or Demo. A lot of people will put it in their cars and they'll drive to work. So you map whilst you're working and then you get paid back a percentage. So that type of hardware is not necessarily mining. It's just kind of mapping a route. And then in exchange for that information, you get paid in cryptocurrency. So there are other ones that are very niche as well. I can't think of any to the top of my mind, but if there are, leave them in the comments below. So hopefully you've learned and you've understood the hardware that goes into cryptocurrency mining. As I said, this is a basic overview for you. Check out the next episode, which I don't know what it will be, but the next episode will probably go into software of GPU, CPU, FPJ, and ASIC mining. Hopefully this gave you some insight into the start or the understanding of cryptocurrency mining. If it did, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more content like this.